As someone who's never tried VR before, the PSVR 2 was a completely new experience for me. In this video, I'll give my detailed first impressions, show you what you get in the Call of the Mountain bundle, go through the setup process, provide a quick overview of the controller charging dock, detail how comfortable the headset is and my experiences with various VR games. I'm hoping by the end of the video I've given you enough information and you can decide whether or not the headset is worth the $550 or £530 in the UK. In the box we have a small accessories box. This contains the Horizon Call of the Mountain Redemption code, the guarantee documentation, keep this safe, the instruction manual, this will be useful so keep it close by, the USB-A to USB-C cable for charging the VR controllers. There should really have been two of these in the box, as ubiquitous as they are. I really think Sony missed a beat here and could have included something that charges both controllers, albeit in a rudimentary way. There is a separate charging dock, which is probably why they didn't. This will set you back £40 however. The stereo headphones with the default ear tips. You also get two additional pairs to cater to different ear canals. The headset arrives with a 4.5m non-detachable USB-C cable. Taking out the headset, I was immediately surprised at how light it is given its size. At the back we have the dial slash button combo for adjusting the headband, the grommets for securely holding the stereo headphones when not in use, a thicker cushion at the back and a bit of a lip and some more cushioning on the front. As is customary the cushions are adorned with the PlayStation symbols. I'll be giving my thoughts on the comfort levels later in the video so stay tuned. Moving on to the front of the headset we have a button to adjust the scope on the right, the scope adjustment dial on the front left. An insignificant yet nice to have detail on the connector under the headband. Four cameras for the video pass through feature allowing you to see the outside world. On the bottom from left to right we have the function button, the power button and the microphone. Now onto the VR controllers. It really is fantastic to see the consistency in design across all of the new hardware. Holding both controllers in hand, they really do feel like an extension rather than an addition. My first impressions are that they are very ergonomic and they look rather futuristic. Both controllers have a safety strap. The beauty here lies in the fact that you can close the strap without needing your other hand. Setting up the PSVR 2 can very much be described as seamless. As soon as you plug in the headset and turn it on, run the update and begin the setup. Connect the headphones to the headset. Connect the controllers to the PS5 one at a time. Pressing the PS button to pair. It's very important you follow these next steps as it'll provide the optimum comfort when wearing the headset. Press the scope adjustment button and pull the scope forwards. Press the headset adjustment button and pull back to make space for your head. Position the headband such that it rests at the bottom of your head at the back. Tighten to lock it into position. Press the scope adjustment button and move it back such that it rests on your nose. It's important that you don't push it too far back and put pressure on your nose. When you're adjusting the lens, make sure your eyes are facing forward in a neutral position. Try not to look around for the best results. If the lens are not aligned properly, you may notice more blur or a softness to the image. The video pass through is a godsend. It is a tad fuzzy but it's more than adequate when looking at your surroundings. And begin the eye tracking calibration steps. You can recalibrate if you find that they're not quite right. The final step is to set up your play area. I chose the sitting option here as I was already sitting down. I subsequently changed this to the standing up option as I found the chair quite restrictive for some of the games I wanted to play. Once you've scanned your play area, you can adjust it using either controller. Press L2 or R2, aiming the reticle outside of the play area and dragging it in to reduce the size and dragging out from the inside to increase it. This is super intuitive and very accurate, so props to Sony. After setup is complete, you can quickly change your play area and other settings by hitting the PS button on either VR controller and selecting the quick options. I like how accessible this is and the fact that you don't need to go levels deep into the settings is fantastic. Putting on the headset for the first time to play Horizon Call of the Mountain, I was taken aback at how captivating everything was. I was genuinely awestruck at how well my movements in real life were tracked in the virtual world. I played for a couple of hours, although I had to limit my sessions to 45 minutes to an hour as I started to feel slightly nauseous. This may be because this was my first experience of VR or simply because it felt like I was climbing endlessly, tilting my head up to see where I needed to go next, resulting in a little bit of vertigo. The battle system works really well for a VR title as you can't be expected to move as fluidly as you would with traditional controls. I haven't exercised in a while so it was quite an arm workout trying to defeat more than one enemy. Definitely excited to play on as it's proving to be pretty good for my general fitness.
Resident Evil Village is also incredible in VR. When I started the game, the camera repositioning option was set to snap and after playing for a little while I started to feel quite nauseous, more so than Horizon Call of the Mountain. I was a little disheartened which led me to check the settings and change the camera repositioning option to smooth. Once I did that, I felt a lot better moving around in game. Another issue related to the snap movement was that it wouldn't always trigger when I moved the thumbstick. This got annoying really fast. Apart from that, the experience was breathtaking. This scene with this beastly zombie was terrifying. The controls were responsive and it really felt like I was fighting for my life and that is not exaggeration. I think the fact that I played at night added to the terror. It's both a terrifying and exhilarating ordeal fighting the monsters in this game. Definitely not one for the faint of heart as the VR aspect amplifies the sense of dread tenfold. Pistol Whip is a lot of fun, it's one of those games I've only ever seen other people play and I've always wondered if it's actually as fun as it looks. Loading it up for the first time and shooting enemies while dodging is so much fun. You have to react quickly to events and your actions in real life translate really well on screen. There's a bit of leniency on the accuracy but that's fine. As long as you're roughly accurate you can have a lot of fun. This is one of those games where you need to be standing up in order to fully enjoy the game, in my opinion. Dodging bullets and obstacles is impossible or very awkward if you're sitting down. By the end of a decently lengthy gaming session I was sweating bullets, excuse the pun. Ragnarok is a VR game that can be enjoyed either sitting down or standing up. The concept is basic, you have 4 drums and you need to hit the floating tile on the corresponding drum. The simplicity of this is what makes it so fun. As someone who is still very new to VR, this is the only game where I didn't feel any nausea or dizziness. There are older titles like Rise of the Tomb Raider that have a VR version, however, these are not compatible with the PSVR 2. The headset does sit quite comfortably on the head, however there is a little bit of pressure on the nose. It depends how close you move the lens piece but I found that it has to be pretty snug in order to avoid a soft or blurry image. More on this later. Once you've adjusted the headset to the desired position, it's astonishingly immersive. All outside light is completely blocked as far as I can tell. My living room is well lit and whilst I was going through the setup process, there were occasions where the display went completely black and I felt as if all lights in the room were turned off. It's always a surprise when you take off the headset and you find that the lights are still on. The leather-like material of the cushions at the front and back of the headset did cause my head to get quite warm during sessions longer than 30 minutes. It's not uncomfortably hot whilst you have the headset on. You do however feel it once you take the headset off. Like I said, it's not that bad and I kind of expected it going in. It took a few tries before I found the most comfortable method of wearing the headset. I made the mistake of adjusting the scope before adjusting the headband at the back. This resulted in a blurry image and I played like this for a while, thinking it normal. I revisited the setup instructions and realised my mistake. You have to position the headband on your head and tighten before adjusting the scope. Once that insufficiently, move the scope back so that it just rests on your nose without putting any pressure on it. The low battery warning appeared after just over 3 hours of solid gameplay. I continued playing with the warning for an additional hour or so before the battery completely died. The battery life isn't too much of an issue if you have the charging dock. It's a bit of an inconvenience to charge without this so I would highly recommend it. The charging dock really is a fantastic piece of kit. In the box you get two USB-C adapters, three pins corresponding with the pins on the dock, the power adapter with a decently long cable, the plug which is also of a decent length, and finally the charging dock itself. The outer edges have the iconic finish we've come to love with the PlayStation symbols, two indentations for the triggers to rest comfortably, the golden pins are located at the front. I really like the smooth curvature of the front and the subtle PlayStation logo is a nice touch. The rubber feet on the bottom to hold the charging dock in place. At the back of the dock we have the charging port. It's indented so that the cable can slot in without obstructing anything. Plug in the power and slot in the adapters. Place the controller on the dock such that you're leading with the pins. This ensures smooth placement. With the controllers docked and charging it really does look fantastic on the shelf. Fits right in and doesn't look out of place. It's a testament to the design consistency PlayStation have achieved with the new console and accompanying accessories. The charging indicator appears at the bottom of the controller just below the charging port. The first bug I encountered was during Horizon Call of the Mountain. I took off my headset to take a break and it was idle for around an hour or so with the game in a paused state. This caused the right controller to disappear and I was only able to get things back to normal by quitting to the main menu and restarting. As I mentioned in the Resident Evil Village section, 
I had a very annoying joystick issue with the right controller. With the camera movement set to snap, it would sometimes take a few tries before it changed the camera's position. This sometimes ended up with the camera movement jerking all the way around. Thinking back to when I was playing, this is probably why I felt immediately nauseous when I had to pan the camera around to reorient myself. Other than those two bugs, my experience with the headset has been completely fantastic. I'll be testing out the PSVR 2 a lot more in the coming weeks and months. If there are any specific games you want me to have a look at or you have any other burning questions about the PSVR 2, please do leave a comment below. I'll be uploading more PSVR 2 and smart home content in the coming weeks. Be sure to subscribe if you want more content like this and lastly please like the video if you enjoyed it. Thanks everyone for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.